So one of two things can happen. You either get closer or you explode. A lot of bands don't survive that kind of experience, I think. You know, so we we just we chose to, you know, deal with all that. You know, there's a lot of ridiculous situations you're in and a lot of stress. I mean, it's a very bizarre existence. So that brought us together as people. And I think just playing every night, um, um, you know, just made us looser as a band. Um, made us be able to read one another and I think that that comes through in the music on the record it's a bit I think it's a little faster and the guitars have more edge to them and and it's just got more um, it's got more life to it I think in the newspaper uh, that you say that you're uh, you're in the band for now uh, you're you playing many bands and you're very used to uh, that kind of uh, life with the band is it very different I mean this with this band uh, and the other band you played before with, or yeah, just we, another we... band in your in your <laughs> life? <laughs> <laughs> just another one. No, I mean this is this definitely feels pretty uh, unique for all of us. I mean, I, I think we found a, a a real understanding amongst each other, and I think that comes along in life really rarely. I mean, even you know, you're lucky if you find one other person in your life that you connect with, and I think certainly at least creatively, musically. We have, you know, met our, our love, first love. Who knows what's going to happen in the future, but this was definitely, it's worked really well for us. We, we understand each other and we share a similar sensibility and an attitude towards the world, so... Here we are. Right, yeah, that's makes the thing easier. Um, this is because maybe you're a European and those guys are Americans, maybe it's a kind of uh, interesting mix. No. Yeah, and also, I mean, I'm very extrovert, and they're much more pragmatic and much more laid back, and I'm sort of really tempestuous, and, and they c are much more even-keeled, and, and that makes a good mixture, and I, I have obviously a very female perspective on the world, and they have a male perspective, and so I think we cover all bases. And by the way, most of people say that rock business is a man affair, but it's not true, because there's some... Uh some girls and women in rock and roll, and uh, garbage is kind of uh, answer of this uh, terrible and stupid question about uh, these are only men in rock and roll. It's not true. You agree with me? Well, or is it difficult to be a, a, a woman in, in, a, in a rock band? I think, like all aspects of the world, women are still at a disadvantage. And I don't mean to hark, you know, hark on about how hard women have it in the world, but lest we forget, you know, there's a lot of, of bigotry still in the world. and. In the, in the music industry, it's still very male-dominated. It's run by men for the most part. And it's, uh, there are a lot of male artists compared to how many female artists there are. Mm. And I think it's still very difficult to be, to be heard as a female musician. It's okay if you're a big loudmouth like I am. I mean, you know, I can walk in a room and go, wah, and, and be heard. But I don't think every female is like that. And so the industry is still structured in such a way that women who are any less you know, up front than I am, it's a little more difficult for them to be seen and heard and attract attention. So we still have a long way to go. But yeah, we, I think we, I think there are women who know how to rock. I think so too. I think, I mean, rock and roll was always to me about rebellion and, and, uh, and, uh, I don't even want to use the words. I'm not going to use the word, but you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. What do I I think the bad thing is that because uh, on the uh, uh, album before you, we have uh, some interviews of garbage, but so with different people. Now you you're coming to do the interview, four of you, and a kind of real band. And so that's going to be very important uh, to the evolution of the identity of the band. Yeah, we always did interviews together, for the most part. Oh, because I read some interviews. There's only uh, words from you, or some words of the, of the two guys, or you know, it, it, and it seems that uh, people answer, you know, just in your corner, in your district, and I think when a band is a band, it's cool when people come and you know, talk with you in a... In sure. front of Paul, it's quite tough, it's all right, you know, <laughs> I can survive. I, I read something in the press, but I have one question for you. I read that you say about the people who are always very happy, that you, you have a... you don't trust them, you, you take very care of the people who are always happy and every, everything's going very well for, uh, for them, it's, uh, it's not good for you. Are, are you agree with that? I don't understand the question. The question is, I, I read in the newspaper uh, a sentence of you, you said to a journalist, uh, I'm taking very care of the people, I will I keep an eye on the people who say 
that they're always feeling very well and uh, and oh, uh, oh I'm suspicious of them. Suspicious, yeah. that's it. That's exactly that word. Well, <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, and I mean, why? because I think human beings are not one-dimensional. I think you never experience just one emotion during your 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 day. And anybody who's like super happy all the time, there's something far wrong. They're chemically totally their chemical balance is out of whack because the human nature is you go up and down over the course of a day you're mercurial you know and and i think people that say they're happy all the time are denying all the like aspects of reality and that's very dangerous yeah. duke's pretty happy all the time i mean look i only smile in the album is more uh, i mean yeah more um, i mean you, you keep the kind of uh, because you're a crazy guy with sound, you're always looking for the sound and all that stuff. It's very particular to garbage, but it's come something spontaneous, more than the, maybe in the first album. It's my impression, so I give it to you. I agree with that. You feel that it was more spontaneous for you to, to put it uh, together in a record, or you just... Uh... I think there's more of a sense of spontaneity on this record, because largely because I think we had played and been a tour, but also the way the songs, a lot of the songs were written with us improvising and just playing. Four of us, we, we just set up our gear and, and some drums and a mic and, and started playing and, and a lot of the songs just came out of those spontaneous moments. So uh, I think that's another reason that it sounds like a band playing these songs and there's more of a flow to them and more of a, uh, a, a group feel to them. It seemed that it was very, very uh, spontaneous at the, uh, when you play, but I think you keep a, a very, uh, a very uh, a special attention on the sound of the mix and all that stuff because I think you take a long time to make this album. So you, you, how you can you keep uh, 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 the spontaneous uh, attitude fresh when you, you have so much time when I'm remixing uh, all the stuff and put together? The, it seems to be a little, a, a full part-time work on every song. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, well, we, we always try to keep our, ourselves, our, our, our minds open to, I don't know, accidents that might happen in the studio or just spontaneous things that happen. Um, and we allow, we allow that to be incorporated into the music. And I don't know, if we, if we get tired of a song, we move on to another song. Also, the songs are never formulated until they're mixed. Um, unlike a lot of bands who write, record and mix. Mm -hmm our process is all sort of interwoven and we were recording at the same time as we were mixing and uh, we recorded onto to computers basically and then transferred onto analog tape so we only had space for 48 tracks out of maybe 120 that recorded so on any given day depending on our mood we selected different sounds to put onto the tape so that keeps it very spontaneous and very exciting right up to the last minute because we don't we haven't made any decision as to what's what instrumentation is finally going to go on the track. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because we have very short attention spans, we get bored easily. We just move on to something that's fun to do. It really, uh, it's, um, uh, even though we have a lot of technology in the studio, we don't even necessarily know how to use it properly, which is why a lot of accidents do occur. None of us have ever read any manual at all, so it's like we just plug things in and see what happens, and it's really exciting. This is by far, of all our records I've, worked on the, the most exciting band to record with. The process of, of recording in the studio when you're writing, recording, mixing, and engineering all at the same time is exhilarating. It's really, it's hard to go back and, you know, I can't imagine going back and having to hear a demo and then you rehearse so you know what the demo is going to sound like and you know what the song is going to sound like. And it's just, it's boring that way. When you, when you constantly make it up out of thin air, it's really exciting. France is one of the first places we come. We go to Amsterdam and then Paris, and that's the beginning of our European tour. And that starts off on the first, uh, we're in Paris on the 3rd of June, playing the Zenith. And then we're gonna play a few more French festivals, and then we're gonna come back in the fall and do some of our own shows. And we're looking forward to it. So 1919 and 99 is gonna be a uh, garbage back on the road and all that stuff, we can be sure to. Uh... And I think we have to wait uh, more through uh, Three years to have the next album, or for the moment you're just here and uh, you do you live your life. Don't know at this point. I mean, we're just focusing on version 2.0. Um, we hope it goes well because we ultimately, I think, we do want to make another album, and we have. Uh, we also hope that we're, we'll be able to stand up. We may tour for 18 months, I mean, go everywhere this time in the world. So, 
It's going to be interesting. Okay, so we're waiting for you the 1st of June in Paris. At the 3rd day. of June. 3rd. Mm -hmm. 3 jour de juin. Oui. Mm -hmm. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Thank Merci. Merci. Voilà, c'était l'interview de Garbage, le retour de Garbage en exclusivité sur MCM dans le mag. En attendant, n'oubliez pas l'album Version 2.0.